If you're about to get cataract surgery, you need to be informed on what might happen with your surgery. Complications are rare, but I'm going to guess that your cataract surgeon didn't go over these complications in detail. Welcome back everyone. My name is Dr. Jeffrey Tran and I'm a board certified ophthalmologist. Today, I'm going to go over some of the complications from least to most severe and here are the top 10. At number one, we have dry eyes. Dry eyes is super common. The symptoms of dry eyes include burning, feeling like there's sand in your eyes, and blurred vision. Dry eyes is more likely to occur after cataract surgery because we use a lot of medications that contain preservatives, and preservatives can dry out the eye. And since we make incisions into the cornea, we can cut some of those corneal nerves and your eyes may not realize it's dry, thus decreasing the tear production. To take care of dry eyes, I do recommend using artificial tears at least four to six times a day, and sometimes I will prescribe a stronger medication to address dry eyes. Number two, droopy eyelids. When we do cataract surgery, we place an eyelid speculum to keep the eyes open during cataract surgery. That lid speculum can stretch the tissues in the eyelid and that's what causes the eyelids to droop. Short term, we can always try an eye drop like Upneak to help lift the eyelids, but many patients do need eyelid surgery after cataract surgery. And as a pro tip, I usually don't recommend the eyelid surgery until after cataract surgery. If you do the eyelid surgery before your cataract surgery, that lid speculum can stretch and break some of the sutures used during the eyelid surgery. Number three, unwanted optical images or known as dysphotopsias. Dysphotopsias are things like shadows or arcs of light that can be very debilitating and they're caused by the actual lens implant. The good news is most patients learn to adapt to the pattern or learn to ignore them. However, Many patients do not adapt to this. And for these patients, I recommend a couple of things. Number one, you can use an eye drop to constrict the pupil a little bit. By constricting the pupil, less light rays will hit the edges of the lens implant, which can reduce the dysphotopsias. Rarely do I ever recommend a surgery called a lens exchange where we replace the lens. This is definitely a last resort consideration. Number four, glare. Glare can also be very debilitating as well. There are certain lens types with a higher rate of glare. Notably, a multifocal lens is more likely to have glare than a monofocal lens. With the newer multifocal lenses, less patients are reporting glare, but that number is not zero. And it's really hard to predict who's gonna be bothered by glare. So there's a couple things I do during the preoperative evaluations. If I hear that the biggest factor in determining whether or not a patient's going to pursue cataract surgery is glare, I would typically dissuade that patient from getting a multifocal lens. In those patients that cannot adapt to the glare, I typically do consider a lens exchange, but this is also a last resort option as well. Number five, posterior capsular opacification. A posterior capsular opacification is when the capsule turns hazy after cataract surgery. And what is this capsule? In cataract surgery, we remove the lens, specifically the inner portions of the lens and leave the capsule inside the eye. This capsule stabilizes the eye and is actually where the new lens implant will sit. However, that capsule can become hazy over time and this can occur days to even years after cataract surgery. Patients will tell me that they have glare or blurred vision. And if this is only a minor amount of glare, I typically recommend observation. However, if the symptoms are severe, we can do what's called a YAG laser capsulotomy. In this procedure, we create an opening into the capsule, allowing light rays to go through once more. This laser can be done in the office and it takes less than a minute. Number six, recurrent inflammation. With any surgery, there's going to be some expected swelling and inflammation. It's also why as eye surgeons, we have you on steroid eye drops. Patients may notice prolonged light sensitivity if they have recurrent inflammation. And for most of my cataract surgery patients, I have them taking a steroid eye drop for one month. However, some patients do need that steroid eye drop for a little bit longer. There are some patients who get combined cataract and glaucoma surgery, and since the surgery is involving multiple parts of the eyes, I do expect the inflammation to be more significant in the combined cases. To manage this, I typically keep patients on steroids for a little bit longer, or I use a stronger dose of steroid medication. Again, recurrent inflammation can be addressed with medications alone. Number seven, retinal edema. The retina is located in the back of the eye. 
and the retina is most analogous to the Kodak film in a camera, where the lens focus light and the Kodak film is what actually captures light rays and converts it to an image that the brain can read. With retinal edema, patients report distorted vision. That means when you look at something like a door frame, which is supposed to be straight, they may notice that the door frame looks a little bit of curvy or wavy. That's also why we give something called an Amsler grid, which is a checkerboard. The checkerboard is supposed to be straight lines, but patients will report distortions and waviness in the Amsler grid. There are some risk factors for retinal edema after cataract surgery. The most common two are diabetes or recurrent inflammation. We can typically do a quick scan in office to see the extent of retinal edema. And depending on the severity, sometimes eye drops alone can address the retinal edema, but in some cases, an injection of medication is required to address the retinal edema. In those patients with really bad diabetic retinopathy, sometimes I will pretreat them with this injection prior to cataract surgery. Number eight, retained lens fragment or even a dropped lens. During cataract surgery, remember, we try to preserve the capsule because it keeps the eye stable and allows a place for the new lens implant to sit. But sometimes during the cataract surgery, that lens capsule can break. Consequently, piece of the cataract can fall towards the back of the eye and can remain inside the eye after surgery. Usually, these pieces will resolve on their own. However, in some cases, a secondary surgery is required to remove those lens fragments. Most patients do very well with this complication, but it just prolongs the healing process. Number nine, floaters and retinal detachment. Floaters are little shadows that you can see in your vision moving around. These occur after cataract surgery because during cataract surgery, we're injecting a lot of fluid into the eye to stabilize the eye. That fluid can cause a process called a vitreous detachment where the vitreous separates away from the retina. This is what causes those floaters. The floaters themselves are not medically threatening, but man, they can be very annoying. Despite many patients struggling to adapt to them, we typically recommend observing these floaters. However, floaters can be a sign of a retinal detachment, which is a serious complication. Retinal detachments are very rare, and they occur in less than 1% of cataract patients. Now, instead of the vitreous separating away from the retina, if that vitreous is very adherent to the retina, it can cause a small tear in the retina and fluid can travel beneath the retina causing a retinal detachment. This will require surgery to repair and it's one of the few complications that can permanently affect your vision. Number 10, endophthalmitis. By far, the most scary and concerning complication after cataract surgery is endophthalmitis. Endophthalmitis is when you have an infection inside the eye. Every surgical center has sterilization protocols and techniques, and despite this, endophthalmitis can still occur. The infection causes a lot of inflammation and can damage the internal structures of the eye, such as the retina, and this can lead to a permanent decrease in vision. Although very rare, this is a very devastating complication. Typically, these are managed with a combination of eye drops, injections, and sometimes even retinal surgery. And that was a quick overview of what might happen with your cataract surgery. Remember, these complications are very rare, and a majority of patients who get cataract surgery are extremely satisfied and would do it all over again. Not convinced? Check out this video right over here to see what vision might be like with either a monofocal or a multifocal lens. And as always, Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.